Hi friends, let me show you the state of the garden now that it is early August. Uh, the aloe looks pretty good and I have some citronella here. My cherry tree. And over here are my brassicas and yes I still have brassicas what I've been doing is chopping bits of it to give to the chickens and they love it and it grows pretty well still of course it bolts but uh, I still keep on top of it and practically three times a week I cut some brassica leaves and I bring it over to my chickens so it makes plenty of food for them to decrease my uh, feed bill and here is some blue planet ageratum that grew this is a perennial and I do plan on keeping it um, and having lots of different plants it's so gorgeous it's got this bright purple lavender color it's gorgeous I transplanted some tomato plants over here because um, what was growing here, all the cosmos um, didn't do too well because they were shaded out. So I put some new seeds in. So there's some cosmos. I think this is going to be a marigold. And that'll help with the smell of the tomato plants so it doesn't attract the tomato hornworms. And here are a ton of the Kilimanjaro marigolds. They're pretty. They're, they're like the white, like cream color. And then the Phyllis marigold. I grew right next to it. Way more brassicas. The Mazurkia zinnias. Um, a calendula, I believe it's Oktoberfest. I pulled out some more, some brassicas and planted more tomatoes here. Same thing in this other L-shaped bed. This is a new bed now. Lots of brassicas. I pulled out some brassicas and I transplanted some tomato plants in there and a basil. And these were from the solo cups because um, I grew a bunch from the pelleted seeds, being that you only get one year to grow them. Um, they don't live that well when they're pelleted seeds. And um, there are a ton of those orb weavers all over my yard. I mean, they just love it. There's an orb weaver. If you can see that spot there, and then there's another one I'm trying to find it on camera. There's the other one. Here is the cherry rose, cherry rose zinnia. It's gorgeous. I love the color, and it's not as tall as the other varieties. Some dahlias, some brassicas. Some more dahlias, unwinds. This is the pink zinnia. Um, oh, it's a smaller, it's a smaller kind. It's called luminosa pink. Some white alyssum. A new, I think this is the cactus variety of zinnia. Some more seeds that I popped in that are now growing. This is the orange Johnny's um, Johnny's zinnia mixed with the luminosa pink ones, and then these bright, like these big purplish pink zinnias. Very Morse. 
So here are my large purple prints zinnias. They get quite tall and it's making so many blooms. And then a nice combination just below it are these um, salvia. And I forget the variety, but it's grown from seed from fairy morse. And I do believe they're only annuals and not perennials. And this is the first time, I've tried to grow it before, but this is the first time I successfully grew celosia. And it's beautiful. And by the way, the sage smells so nice. And I have nigella growing, but it's suffering from the heat. Love in a mist. And I have this alyssum, the ones that have a little bit of purple mixed with the white. A yellow canary zinnia. This beautiful dahlia that just popped up that I reseeded more, more of the seeds to fill this bed. And it's so pretty. It's pink and yellow. It's a new one. That's going to be a marigold. And here is stock. And stock smells really, really good. And it's the first time I, I grew it. And I'll, supposedly it's edible, but I don't know what to cook it or how to prepare it. So I'm, I just love it for the smell and its beauty. And I have some beautiful candy stripe cosmos. Now to this bed. Unfortunately, I had grown some green beans or variety of beans, uh, bush beans in here, and they grew really well. I harvested it twice, and then I had planted um, tomatoes in here, and these quickly grew and kind of over grew over the green beans, so I never got to harvest them again. I'll once in a while find a few, um, like like right there, and I'll take them, but it's really hard to find in here. And so I have some super sweet 100s and some patio choice golden cherry sized tomatoes. <laughs> and it just keeps growing and growing. And recently I found a couple of tomato hornworms, a huge one and like a baby one. So it's it's definitely getting some damage and this some of the fruit sometimes have like um like the they get eaten so we've had to pull some of those out. And this year I've been I've been seeding and seeding squash so many times sowing them and they just don't do too well. So here's my little zucchini. And some zinnias. These are the canary ones. I thought I sewed um, from a packet of mixed colors but only the yellow ones came out. And more tomatoes in the same bed and some peppers some more of a different kind of pepper some basil right here this is Siam Queen basil oh it smells so good and a bell pepper here so I did try to grow a variety of plants here oh my god it smells so good and like I said it's just a crazy mass of tomatoes and I've picked and picked many, many uh, tomatoes, like many containers full of them. And I just wait till I see some red, so it's kind of easy to find because I look for the red or the yellow tomatoes amongst all this green. And then I had planted four cabbages in here, one, two, three, and four, only because I wanted to make this salad. And I hope that these aren't bitter because it's smack in the middle of summer. 
Now, in this bed, it's a heart-shaped bed. I have some ong choy growing and I've harvested it three times now and I'm gonna have to harvest it again soon, which I don't mind, I love it. And it grew so well, I'm so happy. I'm gonna do that every single summer. And over here, afterwards, I this was the bed that had the lettuce, all the different kinds of lettuce. I pulled those out. And so in went the ong choy and then some more tomato transplants. So some patio choice, some indigo rose. This is the patio choice, little yellow cherry tomatoes. And I've yet to see the other varieties. And then I plugged in some some cucumbers. So pretty soon there are about four or five cucumber plants in here. And then over here is one of my oldest cucumber plants. It's starting to get diseased and everything, but it has given so many fruit. Um, what, for instance, so this is this is one. There's another. There's another. So I'm gonna have to come out and pick them. I've been picking them every other day or so. Um, sometimes every every day or every three days. Transplanted another tomato in here. It's starting. So they're all at different levels of uh, maturity so that they can give me fruit throughout the summer. The bee balm is beautiful. The Cosmo is starting to peter out. It doesn't have as nearly as many blooms as it did before, but it's still it's still there hanging on. This one's a little newer plant. It's the marigold. And this is my true hyssop. Smells so good. Unfortunately, I should have cut it before it went to see to flowering. And now all of them are flowering. But it smells so good. It's I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like a rosemary smell. Um, and the flowers are this bright bluish purple. And then here's the Melissa Officinalis, a lemon balm. Smells good. Oh, it's time to harvest it again for, for tea. And here's, here are some leeks, some sage. Ooh, these are doing really well. Sage doesn't require that much water, so I try when I water this bed, I tried not to water that too much. Here's the basil, Genovese. Mmm, smells so good. This, is, this was supposed to be my herb bed. And finally in this bed is, I tried to grow a variety of zinnias in here and it's not doing too hot. It's being covered by some tomato plants. And in this bed, it's chock full of tomato plants as well. Uh, some of that indigo rose cherry. I stuck in, I think, a mortgage lifter, which made huge tomatoes that were bigger than my hands. And I have this um, Australian kind of cucumber. Um, it's called green, green something I forgot, but they're, they're really, they get really big and they're round and they like fit in the palm of your hands. They're pretty nice to eat raw. And my daughter made sushi with it, um, sushi rolls, California rolls. And I wish I could spot one. I did spot one before I moved. I've 
had a heat wave and I water everything in the morning and I try to harvest things and then I go inside. There isn't time to hang out out here because um, it's, it's so hot and pretty humid too. So I just get what I need, water everything, try to make sure they stay alive and then then I take off and go inside and do inside chores. Or... So, um, let's see. Just a variety of plants over here. I have, I had grown whorehound over here initially, but it didn't pop up. So then I grew it over in the other bed, which I got lots of whorehound from. And then I transplanted a ton of tomatoes in here. So yes, I forgot to mention, here is the whorehound in this, this heart-shaped bed, the herb bed. Here's some whorehound that I cut back, so it's way down here. So it's next to this bee balm, which has this fluffy, very nice um, flowering habit. And everything's just overgrown and coming down the sides of the beds, which I don't mind because it's giving me my crops while it's growing in the bed. It's kind of just overhanging. And it's giving shade and food to the wildlife. And I've got some shade from my avocado trees. So it's quite a microclimate here where it's a lot cooler um, because of all the vegetation. So this is my other avocado tree and this one's fuller and this one's the one that fruits for me. This one is the one that's reliable. So last year we had a few fruit and this year we have a few fruit. I counted 20 something. I hope there are more hidden away in the in the branches, but the ones that are visible, it was like about 20, 25 of them. They're about the size of my fingers right now, so I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm hoping that there are more than just 25. The winds, the Anaheim winds. The winds kind of blew the blossoms out of the tree that would have made even more fruit. So, but I'm excited every time I see the fruit. There's another, that's another orb weaver and another orb weaver. Like I said, they're all over, so you'll be walking. There's another one. 